Hello and welcome to the Weekend Initiative. After last week's sunny jaunt to Ibiza, we're back in the UK, but we're not going to let the gloomy weather get us down because Halo reaches out this week and we'll be taking a look at the game later in the show. We'll also be looking at the new range of iPods, but first, Chris casts his verdict on the horror hoodie, F. This is London News at 7 o'clock in our top story. There's been another violent attack at a North London school. The hoodie horror is a bizarre subgenre that kicked off a couple of years back with Eden Lake and continued with the likes of Heartless, Harry Brown and Cherry Tree Lane. Hello? The latest such entry is F, a movie about an alcoholic teacher being chased around his school by a bunch of chads on the hunt for blood rather than cider. No, no, get, get out of me! Get out of it! Well acted and cleverly shot, the film is strong on atmosphere and makes the most of its low budget. Please get out of here. But with little story and no real point, it runs out of steam early on and quickly becomes tedious. So while it gets an A for effort, it only scrapes an F for entertainment. The rap rip flick is more horror hoodie than horror goodie, but what about Apple's range of new iPods? We check them out. Hello, this week we've been looking at the new iPod range from Apple, uh, which was announced two weeks ago. Um, the three new iPods that are out is the Shuffle, Nano and the Touch. And Alex, you want to tell us a little bit about the Shuffle? The iPod Shuffle is the entry level iPod and at £39 it's pretty good value for money. But with only two gigs worth of storage, it's pretty useless. And to be honest, unless you're a cash strapped teenager, I wouldn't bother with it. Instead, I would go for the iPod Nano. It's half the size of the old Nano and it's got this sweet touch screen. So to cycle through your different tunes, you simply drag to the side. It's also got a radio which you can pause mid-broadcast, which is a nice touch. Problem is, when I tried to listen to the FM broadcast, I couldn't pick up any stations. Alex, you're totally wrong. The one iPod that you need to get excited about is the new iPod Touch. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the old iPod Touch, but it's not. It's about half as thick. It's got the new Retina display, and with uh, the Unreal Engine running Ep Epic Citadel, it just looks amazing. It's also got FaceTime and it's got the highest uh, capacity of all the iPods now, except the Classic, which obviously hasn't been updated. So I think if you're gonna buy one, go for the Touch. The thing about the Nano, it offers fantastic value for money. Don't go for the iPod Touch, because if you're gonna go for something like that, go for the iPhone 4. If you've already got an iPhone 4, you don't need anything else, so what the hell are you talking about? Alex, I don't have an iPhone, so for me, this is perfect. I don't wanna go out and spend money, 35, 40 pounds a month on an iPhone. I want to be able to buy it outright, and this for me is perfect, and you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I know. What? Did you say something, Tom? Uh, oh god, no, it doesn't work. Um, no, buy the iPod Touch. iPhone 4! Next up, director Joe Dante has 15 seconds to tell us why you should watch the whole 3D. The reason you should see the whole is because I haven't made a movie in a really long time. <laughs> I need to make another one. And so the more people go to see this one, the more chance I get to make another one. Uh, and it's uh, and it's not bad either. Fantastic. That's the best one we've had, I think. <laughs> that will actually get people to go. You can see Joe Dante's hole in 3D at cinemas this Wednesday. To finish this week's show, Martin casts his Spartan eyes over the epic Halo Reach. It's nine years since Bungie first introduced us to its improbable world of plasma fire and space marines. And with Reach, it bids farewell to the series that's helped define the Xbox generation. Halo's formula has always been divisive. For every dribbling fanatic, there's a cynic who's oblivious to the charms of plasma grenading a grunt. But it's nevertheless clear that this is the best of the lot. Reach's campaign cuts a chaff that's often blighted other Halos. There's no flood, and nor are there any levels set inside someone's rectum. It's just one exhilarating set piece after the other, as Bungie draws upon the greatest moments of Halo's past. And for a series that's often accused of making baby steps, Reach makes some startling strides. Yes, there's a space battle that's likely to grab the headlines, but the real game changers are the armor abilities, with which you can cloak yourself, send out a decoy, or most brilliantly, fly a jetpack. But the real star of Reach is the online multiplayer. There's a wealth of options to keep it compelling for years to come, and the amount of customization on offer means people will still be playing Reach well after Bungie has moved on to pastures new. That's it for this week's show. Join us next week when we'll be checking out the very best in games and entertainment. Thank you.